Ladies and gentlemen, we just finished filming Kelly's front yard. He has an incredible collection of edible plants, fruit trees, and other things. We the front yard video was a lot longer than I expected because he has a lot more. Everything you everywhere you look around, there's something, and I'm expecting the backyard to be just just as the same way. So this is part two. You're gonna see his backyard now. Let's go. This is the same day. This is, again, we're in June. This is Southern California. Let's go to the backyard of Kelly's uh, amazing collection out here. Let's go, come on. And it's my pride and joy, so I welcome you. This, uh, still not huge, about three times the size of the front yard, right? But, so when I made my 3D labels for everything, right now I have 300 labels. And when I have a label, it means it went into the ground. Okay. So <laughs> you're gonna see a shit show. What what you'll notice is like uh, when I did some of my videos last year, my Eugenia account was I think at 64 or something like that. Well, when they're in a pot, you can go 360 around it. Everything looks amazing. Like, oh my God. Well, now they're all in the ground. So you're going to have a good time trying to hunt them down. But without further ado, <laughs> kind of my pride and joy because I do love the backyard. It's my favorite whoa. spot. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> so because Matt makes me keep a path, we did just a simple path this way. Okay. And so then we have a deck and a water feature. So let me get this out of your way so we can walk. This is my little gorilla cart I use to carry stuff around in. Okay. So if I had, I'm always changing stuff. So I, I can't tell you this is where all my Anona are, and this is where all my Habotokaba are, and blah, blah, blah. But the way these two areas are, this is a lot of different Habotokabas from Cauliflora, where I'm, I apologize, you just missed 500 fruit on the tree. Really? At least 500. Wow. Grimal, which you'll still get a few, so feel free to take a few of the Grimal. Whoa. So this, this little tree here yep. had 500 on them. And, and that, the, I mean, that is probably from 2017-ish. That's when I yeah. got it, I think, as a seedling, because I don't think I grew this one from seed, but it is definitely about 12 years old, because when I got it, it must have been, I don't know, five years already. Oh, that's beautiful. And uh, how was the fruit? Delicious. Yeah. Of, of the best habotacaba I've had. Do you have a jabotacaba hierarchy ranking? system i do but i like a lot of jabotacaba that aren't in this purple range okay you know like i was telling you about plenty of edulis and a couple of the other weird mm -hmm. or weirder more not common ones i like those because they're so different they don't taste like jabotacaba to me so mm -hmm. but if i had to do the purple of the ones i've tasted so far you can't go wrong with cauliflora, cauliflora. it's just really good Grimal has kind of a oaky wine taste to me that I don't love. It has some tannins. This is the Grimal. Yep. From 2016. Wow, has a lot of fruit on it. And this one I did grow from seed. So I got from this seed. sucker to fruit at eight years old. Wow. That's fast. Yeah. For these. Yep. That Something about cool. it, it really liked. So is there a particular one that squirrels go after more? These two? Uh -huh. Because they have easy access to our fence. Uh-huh. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to buy an electric uh, fencing panel and I'm about to run electric fencing all the way down so that at least there's somewhat of a barrier. Because uh -huh. if I don't, I mean, the taller these trees get, the squirrels, I mean, one day on a Monday, it'll be loaded. You come Tuesday when they're all just perfectly ready and you won't get any. I mean, they will have eaten all of them and bane of my existence oh that sucks so that's why i was joking like matt and i got about 10 percent of the fruit the squirrels got the rest of the grimmel and the and the, and the cauliflower oh, yeah that's, uh, well i'm sorry to hear that but i'm glad you got some <laughs> there, i think you'll like these i won't uh, we'll do a blind taste test okay i'm not going to sure. describe these right okay because okay. yeah. with me you're going to hear me repeat oh my god so rare blah and you know people roll their eyes but i get excited about fruit mm -hmm. so i'm not going to tell you anything about these two okay. okay in fact i won't even tell you which one i'm giving you okay but I'll you do have eyes. one that's I'll going to be my orange eyes, my hand up. okay hold on you have one that's going to be orange and one that's going to be purple okay, okay. And, and you're not looking i'm not going right. to tell you which one i'm giving you. okay all right so there's one okay. i want you to eat it and tell me what you think you guys my eyes are closed 
Ooh, that's great. Wow, that's really good. That tastes like a, a grape, a watermelon, and a, kind of like a can. It has a watermelon aftertaste. That's great. Do you get any smokiness out of it like you did no, from the front? Okay. No smokiness. Uh -uh. Not at all. All right. So I'm going to tell you with the other one. Let me get this off. Now you can try that one and tell me what you think. Mm. That one probably should probably have a lot more seeds in it. This, that one has three seeds in it, which are all going to my pocket. Yep. <laughs> yep. That one's also really good. The first one had a much stronger flavor, I think. The second one was sweet, too. The first one was amazing. It was, I'm telling you, it was like grape watermelon. I'm opening my eyes again. Um, wow. Yeah. So which one did I have? So you had the purple one first. Oh, That's no, truly good. a Eugenia yeah. SP purple. Okay. So it looks like a cherry of the Rio Grande, but it tasted different enough where I think it's in its own thing. And fully loaded. This one tree. Oh, my God. Well, you, I'm not even going to guess at the count, but we've already picked three bowlfuls. Yeah. And we still have this many. So what, what I'm laughing about is that you like that one better. Yeah. Because that's the first one you had. Yeah. Sometimes so the orange one. these orange ones blow this one away. Oh, yeah. So what's weird about Eugenia in general, and feel free to try another one, sure. is that it is per fruit. Some fruit are mind-blowing, and some fruit are just so-so from the same exact tree. Yeah. Huh. Interesting. Mm. Can I have another one of these? You sure may. Yeah. Okay, this one just came right off my hand. Now, the one, if, the one I just gave you, if it was like this, you did not have a good one. I want your experience to be... <laughs> another one <laughs> here try another orange one just for the hell of it this one had two seeds keep them all okay let's try this next one it's the orange one the orange again just for genetics to me is cool because it's a freaking bright orange neon fruit that's good but was it I any like better it. than the first one no no about, about the same, same. Okay. I, like, I like this one a lot more the 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 purple. The, the purple. Dark. Wow. It's fully loaded. I have to say, I had a second one as well. And for right now, yeah. I agree with you. Mm -hmm. But I promise you, sometimes this can beat this one. Just really depends. Wow. Yeah. Cool. That's why, like, people diss this class of trees, Eugenia, and they're like, oh, it's not bird food. It's this, is that. Bull crap. Yeah. It so really can be tasty. I think people that haven't had the right one or they had it at the wrong time or they picked it too early or someone told them that it is bad so their reputation spreads. It's kind of it's kind of unfair for these kind of for these varieties because like you said if you get the right one these are really special. I They're agree really with good. you. And more and it's like so Kelly you get you said you get 112 in the win in the summer 34 in the winter uh do, they, do you have to specially protect these trees for for anything or what there are certain eugenia that are cold sensitive the ones that i have decided to put in the ground have proved themselves that they don't need protection from that by in the container stage so therefore they go in the ground these as you can tell i mean we had a pretty cold winter nothing they don't like the heat Worse than they don't like the cold. Okay. So they can stand more cold than they can heat. When it gets yeah. to 112, you know, you'll get some leaf burn. But if I water them heavily, sometimes they can't even tell. Okay. Cool. You know, and, and, and this, you won't be able to, you know, in about a month, this is a different Eugenia, Calicina. Okay. These fruits will get probably twice the size of this purple one. Mm -hmm. And again, they just have a different unique taste. They look very similar. Yeah. But they're different species, yeah. and just it's one that was like I can't believe this is in the same family. So yeah. again, this one, my God, uh, is turning to a big bush, and it's you know hard to see, but it's probably six feet by three feet. Wow! <laughs> and it's hiding. This is truly a dwarf guava. This guava is fifteen. Mm, I've lived here twelve years. Started in seed. I would say it's thirteen years old. Wow. And how tall would you say it is? Five feet max? Yeah, five feet. Yeah. About five feet tall. And produces full-size guavas. Wow. Okay. Interesting. And guys, look at the spacing again. You're seeing a trend here, guys. 
there's the trunk of the one of the cherry with the Rio Grande and there's another one they've planted I'd say about two feet apart yep and then here's another one these were all sold to me by the way as SP orange <laughs> yeah so as you can tell there's variation there's orange purple okay. to be determined okay. so I don't know but yeah about a foot and a half to two feet and all seedlings right yep yeah. Well, almost everything, even the guava was a seedling. So again, I've just collected fruit from all over, whether it was tasting fruit or importing fruit with the seed license. And then I just kind of love the mystery of what you're going to get. That's fun. The mystery is fun. Yeah. You know, we've, yeah. we've missed like, you know, the lemon guava over there, you know, blah, blah, blah. Um, so this one, I was disappointed because okay. I made a faux pas. I posted like, oh my God. My spiritosatensis uh, is blooming. Oh my God. This is not spiritosatensis. Grimmel used to be called this name. Oh, okay. So when I was so excited that I was getting fruit and I showed the leaves to a few people, we all figured out like, oh, no, this is just Grimmel, but this is yeah. what people used to call this one. Okay. So I told myself, this one is going to be a grafting experiment. So I have started to graft the true spiritosatensis because I do have it. I have another one where the leaves yeah. truly are. And so it's getting grafted on this. So the rootstock will be Grimmel, but then the grafts will be yeah. different things. I like how you write notes to yourself here. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Kelly writes notes to himself on the tree. So he says, turns out to be Grimmel from FFF. So keep the other true spirito like you just said you're gonna graft yeah because you know i run out of space so oftentimes if i don't write myself notes yeah. i've accidentally sold something that i meant to keep and that gem which i can't get back is gone because i'm not going to go and chase it down and ask that person to sell it back so yeah notes everywhere just yeah. so that i don't accidentally do that again nice yeah uh, Arian, which is a small little yellow guava, super tart, but super interesting and super good. So if anyone looks, you know, wanted a pretty small tree that's a guava, that's a good one. Mm -hmm. Apples with about 10 different varieties on it. Oh, multi-grafted apple? Multi-grafted, wow. yeah. I've done wow. things from, uh, you know, New Orleans to cinnamon spice to Christmas pink, all over the place. And which one is your favorite? So far, they've all been so tart. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because I think it's a Anna or one of those is the rootstock. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. They've not, none of them have been mind blowing. How about that? Okay. Okay. But I do love the fact that there are eight different apples that are blooming on this yeah, guy. Like, cool. I do think that is cool. There's one of the graphs right there. Yep. Yeah. In fact, most of the lower ones, you know, like this is a uh, Spitzenberg. I haven't been able to, it may need more chill hours than what, because mm -hmm. even though I get 34 for four, not, you know, some of these apples need 800 chill hours. Mm -hmm. So I may never get some fruit off of them, but yeah, it is okay. what it is. Okay. More Jabo de Cabos? More Jabo. So this whole row, whole row is, ja is, Jabo is Jabos. And um, if like this one's also a cauliflora with trunk of flora grafted onto it. Okay. So there are going to be a few of these that a few years from now, they're going to be truly cocktail trees. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they're going to have a lot of the seedlings that I'm growing out. I don't have space for, so they, that's shrunk of flora that you're looking at. That, and that is the graft line, right? Yep. There? Yep. Wow. How's Jabo de Cabo grafting for you? That's a difficult one. Okay. That seems to be hit or miss for me. Um, so, and also, you'll see that some of these, so this trunk of flora, God, I did 10 years <laughs> ago. It lived for nine years. And then it finally, finally died. Oh, okay. Okay. But then the other trunk of four are great. So even per graft, I'm like, ah, right. truly had success. And then boom. So I can't wow. explain it. So we got one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, and then five, six, six seven. Jabba de Cabo trees. Seven in the ground, oh, if you count the these. Ground. Yeah, because this is... This is the... Paulista or Thompson. That is beautiful. Yeah. For a spring showy ornamental tree, that is all burgundy yeah. or maroon. Oh my God, I, I can't tell the viewers enough. It's the best looking of Botacaba. Uh, Trunk of Flora, just because it's from a different source, and oftentimes different sources, you can get different you know, variations. And then you have white Botacaba. 
Wow. I'm growing the white and I have yet to taste it, but it's a beautiful, beautiful leaf. This one was a seedling from June 14, 2017, and it was eight inches tall. It was two years old. So here we are, what is it, seven years later, and it's growing. Wow, this is actually good growth for Java to come because these are known to be slow growers. But this is growing nice. Trunkiflora is a little faster than the cauliflora, but, you know, not by much. Yeah. But I and think you said this, this was the white you said. This is white. Okay. And I just think, you know, that is so cool that that's the same family. This leaf and that leaf are yeah. from the same family of plants, but yet this is so soft and nice and yeah. pillowy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Interesting. So I have a lot of other white varieties, so that's going to be my one when the other ones get big enough and the uh, scions are about the same size, I'll okay. start grafting them. And you have more, he has a bunch more in pots back there. A yeah. bunch of Jabba de Cabas in pots, in containers. Yep. Those will be the ones, like, uh, I have a couple of white selections, you know, whether it's uh, Gigante or some other ones that people have given me seeds for, they're all going to get onto the two white ones I have in the ground. Okay. Cool. Very cool. Whoa, whoa, Okay, whoa. all heavy try. <laughs> oh, hey, hey, hang on. Man. <laughs> hey, go. Yeah, all right, wait, 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 wait. Whoa, look, guys, look, guys. I'm, all right, I'm excited now. Oh, man. Man, oh, man. Look at this. I'm trying to find the best one because I want your opinion again without me telling you whether it's great or, or not. I want you to tell me. Ladies and gentlemen, look at... Oh, something just fell. And, oh, they can. I, I don't do Take it on purpose. <laughs> Wait a minute. Hold on. We got to save the one that fell. Oh, I, was it this one? Yeah. And then yeah. there was another one. You can't waste these. <laughs> this will be a love-hate thing. Really? You're either going to love it or you're going to hate it. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Suriname Cherry, also known as Pitanga. And I named this cultivar after where we live yeah. because it was a seedling and it was supposed to be red. It turned out black okay. and that's yes. well stopped. Eugenia Uniflora, one of my favorite fruits. We could do a video just about this tree, but there's a lot more to see. We'll move on, but I'm going to try this fruit in front of you because I want to hype this tree. It's very underrated. Uh, everyone should be growing this, especially if you could get a good variety. Mmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's good. Mmm. Mmm. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, that's a winner. Okay, good. Yeah. Uh, let's see. How do I describe this? It has the resin. It has a resiny bite of a good Indian mango, I would say. If you're into that kind of... It has a strong flavor. Of, some folks aren't used to it. That's why some folks probably don't like it. It has a very powerful flavor. But it grows on you very fast. And, man, it's good. And look at the production on this tree. It's crazy. And it's funny that you say that because of the flavor, these are a little bit more mild than the ones that will be produced at the end of the summer with the heat. Oh, okay. So you're almost punched in the face with flavor on wow. the, because it'll produce twice a year. Okay. So you get two crops a year. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. And something's going on with the tree. You'll note it like it has died back all of a sudden. So for two years now, I think either it caught a virus or it's sensitive to something in the yard, but a lot of the tree will die. Yeah. So I am trying to grow out seedlings and graft this one because you're right, Uniflora can go all over, but I'm with you. It is an underappreciated fruit. Yeah. And since this one has been, I mean, just good year after year, I am trying to graft scions to yeah. save it. Very nice. There's a lot of uh, Surinam cherry haters out there. Yep. But I'm telling you, you haven't had a good one yet. You haven't found a good one. I, I, I like right that variety. you say that because I totally agree. Yeah, because yeah, uh, in Florida they grow these a lot and they use them as hedges. They're kind of a, they're kind of a ignored fruit. People just take them for granted because they just use them as a hedge. But uh, out here, they're very manageable in size. Like Kelly said, you get two crops a year once they get established. And you're not going to get this fruit at a grocery store. I've never seen one at a grocery store. Maybe if you go to Brazil, you can get it at the grocery store there. But here you got to grow it yourself. Wow, look at that. And feel free to eat some more because they, I mean, they're just, I can't get enough. When I start, I'm like, man. These are like, uh, to me, they're the potato chips of the fruit world. You start yeah. eating one, you're going to want another one <laughs> and another one. And you just can't stop. I like once, that. Once you get it going. I've uh, stood in front of mature trees sometimes and I just eat. I just can't, I just can't stop. Okay. 
I'm glad you like it. I can appreciate someone else who really appreciates it. Because, uh, yeah, I mean, I do. I've had the ones, especially the red ones that taste like gasoline. Mm -hmm. Man, that's not a pleasant thing. But And that red one, there is. I do have a Ooh. red one. It the, can. The, 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 this last one I ate was... Wow. Was even better, right? Right. It's yeah. per fruit. Yeah, it's per fruit. Yeah, yeah. Because this last one was, was a winner. Okay. Again, seeds are going into my pocket. <laughs> Hang on, guys. So I'm glad you said because like I did a video the other day of this one, and the one I had was like high sea tropical punch. Yeah. It's hard because you do get a little sharpness, but it's the sweetness that really is what your mind remembers more than that like bitter yeah. taste. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Like, like Kelly said, the, the red ones can be, have a gasoline taste. If you get a, a darker one, if you get the right variety, uh, the, the flavor is really good. It has very little of that gasoline aftertaste. Wow, that's a big one. Let me give you that one and try the red one. Just see what you think. Well, it's not really gasoline-y, but, you know, it's different than the black. Yeah. So there's a, of these, there's, the, there's a black, there's a red, there's a white. I've seen white. There's a pink which is supposed to be really good. And then uh, one of my friends down in Orange County, he grows the orange, he named it variety, it's called the Orange Starburst. Also very good. Shout out to Tiny Jungle. Oh, I'm gonna have to get that one. Tiny Jungle, if you're listening, you need to sell me one. <laughs> I'll sell you one of these. Okay. I just tried the red. The flavor is not as strong. Yeah. It's kind of a, on the sour side. Yeah. But this darker one had a, had a very intense flavor that I really liked. This is the first seed I'm actually going to drop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, the red do get better, but the red's about two weeks off from the purple. Uh -huh. So usually in the season, you'll get all the purple first or all the black, and then the red come into season. So I'm not going to diss the red. It's not as good, but it shouldn't be sour. Yeah. It turns into like a mild, really sweet tomato when it's ready. ready. Okay, cool. Yeah. And these are, uh, again, seedlings? Yes. Yep. Okay. And the, where's the... What is the red stuff? Are they just packed? I have, them, I have them labeled. So this black one I put a label on is, um, I can show you better from this side because here you can see both the trunks. So unfortunately they're leaning for the sun. Oh yeah. So this one I'm going to push right here. This one is the red and this one is the black. Okay. So they are very close together. It's hard to tell them apart, but they're about one foot apart so the one on the right black the one on the left is red okay cool man wow <laughs> and then these are other eugenia that people have yeah. sold me from brazil that are more the sps i believe them to be in the uniflora range just because of the way that they uh the leaf yeah. shape yeah it looks like it but again i hear good things about them and i just have to wait to taste the fruit myself to see okay. what they're actually like so that's the sp yeah again the sp is a what is that what is it? S unknown variety uh, unknown species unknown variety, yeah. yeah okay very cool man this is a beautiful tree there's a lot of fruit back there let me try to get into focus Heavy and and kid there. you not this is a low production year is it yeah especially for the black so all this is is low, okay. Yeah, I mean that one year yeah. I couldn't even see the tree because it leave it starts a leaf and flower out at the same time, yeah. which is around February March. Okay. So when there's no leaves, you can really see the amount of fruit forming, and I couldn't see tree. And wow. after that year, it's never bloomed and fruited that much again. But wow. still enough. But okay. yeah. yeah, crazy year. Okay. Wow. Nice. What is this? This is a uh, cinnamon apple. So it's a poteria, oh, okay. Candy Canistel, and Mame Sapote, and all those. I got this as an <clears throat> air layer at the Festival of Fruit in 2015. It's another one of those repetitive stories where we're like, God, that guy says a lot of the same shit. But it's bloomed consistently every year without producing a single fruit. Okay. So I grew other seedlings of the same fruit out from seed to cross pollinate and look how different the leaves are i can tell they're they're related mm -hmm. but yeah. so this is an air layer of someone from san diego and this is a seedling of the same exact fruit okay and i was just like that's big it's a big difference and it's the cinnamon apple yeah it's a polteria hypoglauca okay yeah, yeah. interesting 
So oh, this one hasn't bloomed yet, but I'm going to take a paintbrush this year and actually go and try and hand pollinate some of these guys because I've been told sometimes that works. Okay, cool. Nice. And as lots we go back here, yeah, lots, some things are relatively new this year. This is something that's worthy to point out because this I do have to protect in the winter. In the winter, this gets cut back and thrown into the greenhouse that I built right there. Okay. This is a rare Anona. Um, it's an SP. Okay. It's common name is Erotica number four. There's a guy out there, Marcos, and he found a set of Anona and he just put numbers to them. One, two, three, four. This is number four. I love how tall and wispy it is. The fruit is good from his description. So I am hand pollinating. So sometimes you'll see black little strings right here. Uh -huh. Sometimes the blue tape, the black strings means that I found a flower that fell off and it looks like it's self pollinated. Oh, okay. And the blue tape is going to have a letter on it. And that will tell you that I cross pollinated it with something else. Okay. Because when we're looking at the cherimoy up front, that's a three petal flower. This is a Rolinia type flower where it kind of looks like a, like a cup. Okay. So there aren't really individual petals per se, but it opens up and in the center is where you have to deposit the pollen. Okay. So I call that Rolinia type. So I am starting to learn what all these different ones are. And I'm using Rolinia type to uh, go and pollinate other Rolinia type. Mm -hmm. So here is kind of all the Rolinia type. So this one is super rare. This is a Nona Bahiensis. So Joseph Kanach has this one as well. His looks different. So his has a hairier front um, leaf. The one in, that I'm growing in the front exhibits those same characteristics. But this one, just from a different seller, you can tell from the leaf it's still a Nona bahiensis, but it lacks that hair. So who knows what it's going to be, right? Interesting. But I went, well, all right, you can tell here. I tried to pollinate something, and it just fell off. But I do think I have some successful ones, because let me see if I can find one. There was one that stood out where I'm like, oh, my God, I think that's going to stay on. Oh, it could be this one. This one has been on for about four days. So if they don't fall off in four days, I assume I probably have some success. Nice. So this one as well. So fingers crossed, this will be interesting. I don't know who else is growing it in the ground. It shouldn't live in our conditions, but it does. Interesting, wow, that's really cool. And so you have Parviflora, Bahiensis, Longiflora, and then this is probably Neo, Neo and Cygnus. So you haven't seen this one yet either, but they all have the same type of flowers. Wow. And, and what is this back here the, with, the, with the light trunk, the brown trunk? This yeah, one right that, here, that, that is a guava, guava. Okay. that um, I'm not a fan of. I was waiting to get seeds of a fruit this year and it's probably coming out. Okay. But that's just me. If somebody else had the guava, they might like it. Yeah. Cool. Oh, and behind you, along the wall, if you yeah. see any really dark tropical raspberries, feel free to pick them. Tropical raspberry. Wow. So, like, this color is what you're looking for. I know there's a spider web, but if you don't mind. Um, yes. Yep, it's either going to be super sour. If it's not ripe, well, that may not be ripe yet. You want it to come off at the slightest pull. So see if you can find some that are... Maybe this one. No. I'm going to have you try them, even if they don't come off, because you need to just tell me your opinion. Oh, this one did. And this, so this is the... Yeah, tropical, I, th I believe it's in the... Tropical blackberry? Tropical raspberry. Oh, raspberry. I believe it's in the Mysore family, but I'm not a thousand percent Trunks. sure. As long as it tastes like a raspberry, I'll assume that's an okay thing. It's vel ve very pillowy, velvety, pretty sour, but not unpleasant. But not unpleasant? Yeah. Ooh, try this one. We just ate some Suriname cherries that were like <laughs> very intensely flavored. It's kind of hard to, you know. Oh, I think you said a, pillowy. That gives me a good word to work with yeah. on those. Very soft, very easy to eat. Yeah. 
You don't even need teeth. <laughs> exactly. You could just, uh, it'll fall apart in your mouth. Pillowy is a great, yeah. great, great word for that. Wow, uh, these cool. are Eugenia Brasiliensis. So, uh, ah, yeah. Uh, they are that, the, uh, the yellow Grumachama. Gruma yeah, yeah. Okay. So I have red Grumachama, two yellow, another red, and then I have another row of Grumachama that are experimental ones that people have found in the field. They're supposed to be all different shapes and sizes, so I'm just growing those out. They all flowered this year, not a single fruit. Oh, whoa. Okay. Yeah, so unfortunately. So, okay, you just said you have a bunch of experimental seedlings. Those are the ones over here. So the growth type is a little different with each one. Yeah. Like this one is going to be uh, Urethra carpa. Yeah. That's a type of... Yeah, 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 cool. Brazilianthus. So I don't think this one's uh, yellow. I think it's red. But then you have yellow, yellow, and yellow. Again, it's hard to see. Yeah. But when I point them out this way, uh -huh. I may get one fruit. I'm looking right there. Oh, yeah. I got one fruit that's going to be yellow. <laughs> nice. Yeah, you got another one too right here. Oh, you found one? Oh, all right. Yeah. yeah. There you go. That would be awesome. Very okay. nice. <sighs> Guys, um, the, the, I haven't even been able to, had time to point out to this, but there's strawberry plants everywhere, <laughs> kind of like as a to guard the other plants and to create this path. Like, look, there's strawberry here. It's the whole row of all strawberries. I like to point them out because that's something I did this year. I wanted yeah. something to define pathways. Yeah, yeah. So I chose strawberries yeah. to be it, if not and, rocks. And then you got like an understory here of, uh, looks like herbs, more herbs. This looks familiar. This looks like something someone in the comment section can describe. Kelly, what is this? This one is a purple pepino melon. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So, okay. uh, you know, the leaves, the flowers, and the fruit are all purple. Ah. What about, the, what about the inside of the fruit? It also has a purple tint. Ah. Uh, I haven't had a chance to taste it yet, but people say it's so-so. Yeah. The more sun it gets, the more purple it is. So, right now, it only gets about five hours of sun. If it had more sun, then you wouldn't, you wouldn't see any of this green. Ah, interesting. And it's kind of taking over. I got to weed it out. Yeah, this can take over. This wants to be very aggressive. <laughs> in the winter, all of this would do the ground. You yeah. saw all the nice little path. This yeah. happened in the last five months. Wow. So and we're standing on a, looks like a very heavy layer of mulch of wood chips. How much, how much wood chips do you have down here? So the one thing I would like to point out is that our yard, when we moved in, had nothing in it. It was just sod. Really? And it was also about a foot and a half lower than what you're on now. Oh, okay. So in the last 12 years, I would go to Griffith Park, you know, to the free composting facility. Mm -hmm. And I would buy, I mean, I would uh, pack up in my SUV either the wood chips or the zoo poo. Mm -hmm. And so you're standing, yeah, on about that much of improved soil that I'm letting break down. And so it means less watering, less maintenance, less care. But so that's why you're seeing everything. It's just hard to maintain. If I keep doing that, 10 years from now, we're going to be above the fence line. <laughs> so I don't know what I'm going to do yet when that happens. I'm still working that out. Yeah. Okay. Ah, oh, that's interesting. We're standing on poop. It's been Wait, broken, broken down. <laughs> you're right. The strawberries were new. Everyone goes gaga over the strawberries. Sometimes I take things for granted, and I love when people bring my focus back to some of the things where I'm like, I do like the strawberries. I don't know why I don't point out the strawberries. I grow regular strawberries and alpine. So have you ever had the alpine strawberries? Before you leave, let me, <coughs> I'm going to get you alpine strawberries so you can taste them. Okay. They're interesting. Sounds good. Uh, Guys, look, rare, another, well. That's Eugenia candoliana. Yeah, super hard to find out here. This is called the rainforest plum. And it's growing in the ground. In the ground. Planted in uh, 2017. It's supposed to be a really good fruit. Uh, it's a Eugenia family. And uh, mine died. But this one is looking pretty good. Eugenia Candoliana. The rainforest plum. This looks interesting. This actually looks really interesting. Right, let's come back to the Suriname cherry real quick. And then we'll go back 
What is the this? red and white have different flavor profiles. So the whites okay. up front, this is the red alpine strawberry. This is a red alpine strawberry. I've never had one of these. You're going to see me eat this for the first time on camera. Here we go. Should I put all th just eat all three? Mm. Oh, okay. When I, when I ate it and I was, I was in my mouth, I was like, this is kind of strange. It, it didn't taste good, but immediately I got the aftertaste, which is very tropical. I actually really like it. It has a great aftertaste. Started off bitter and went to, to uh, very pleasant. That's what red, white, yeah. you're going to skip the bitterness and you'll get nothing but the sweet. Ah. Okay. So those are the difference between the two. Interesting. And what, what is this? This is like, it really, looks really cool. So what that. I try and grow is like, this is a papaya. Ah. But when I grow papaya, I don't want to grow the regular papaya because you can buy that in the grocery store. Yeah. So this is an ultra rare one. This is Carica lanceolata. Yeah. It can be a multi-trunk papaya, which oftentimes they aren't. But the coolest thing is I want people to go and look this one up. It is a candy striped so it's about yay big and it's like red and white and green so it looks like a piece of candy fruit wow. it is absolutely unbenign a beautiful fruit and look at all the flowers and fr i'm hoping yeah. i get fruit i did hear it was dioecious which is why i have two I planted have two. so you got one you got one here yep and then one, one here and is this the male female situation unknown because i haven't okay. sexed them yet okay. but because the trunks are so different you can often tell the sex of a plant because of you know yeah. how different it grows hmm. this is one of the more interesting leaf shapes i've ever seen on a papaya wow it almost looks like a mango tree yeah it's yeah. super cool it's super weird and again the pictures there aren't a lot of photos of the fruit online because you know there's not a lot of research on it yeah. super just everything about it is interesting. What, and it what's loses the uh, scientific name again? Uh, Carica lanceolata. Okay. When it's in the winter, it goes deciduous. Uh -huh. So you're also dealing with this Charlie Brown looking tree where it's like just these sticks. And you're like, what the hell is this? So it's really cool. Uh, wow. Cool plant. Very good looking. And we have some other really rare papayas in the back. They look more like your trop your typical papaya, uh -huh. but the fruit doesn't. I mean, um, just like a pomelo is different than a lime, you know, the, the both citrus, that's how papayas can be. There's all different shapes and sizes. I have a papaya that's white. Wow. I can't wait to see what that's like. So this, would, this just fits in. Um, you know, if it gets a spot like this, in the middle of everywhere, you know it's something special. Yeah, That's yeah. how you know it's like, <laughs> cool. If it's tucked in the corner, it may be an afterthought. <laughs> yeah. Wow. That's nice. Cool, cool. Wow, look at this guy. And what we'll do here before we do the back, this is the rose apple you were oh, talking yeah. about. One apple. of my favorite fruits. And I do have a couple of flowers open that you can photograph. Yeah. Rose apple. Good. Tastes I mean, like roses. It's, yeah, it's Look at the awesome. flower. Oh, that's beautiful. Look at that. Wow. Interesting. We put the little waterfall feature here for humidity for some of the air, other rare plants that like, um, yeah. you know, higher humidity. This is Passiflora ligularis, which is usually only found in colder areas. Okay. But because we're able to plant it near this waterfall feature, the humidity lets it take off delicious fruit doesn't taste anything like the passion fruit that we're used to here because okay. it's not um no acid at all it's pure sugar mm. but it's hard to fruit here because of the temperature but i did get it to fruit twice so far i got two fruits off of it wow okay just takes a lot of work all right what and what does the fruit look like does it look like a passion fruit or yeah but it's completely yellow so okay. it's yellow with little white spots everywhere and you can crack it with your hand really easily. Okay, and, and the flavor you said doesn't, doesn't taste like the... Tastes like sugar, water, and honey mixed together. Wow, that's interesting. Wow, cool. They're definitely interesting. Yeah. Uh, this is yellow habotacaba, which is a cool habotacaba because it's... Uh, well, it's called jabotacaba. It is in a different family than plinia, 
but it produces you know fruit right on the trunk once hence why it's called that but beautiful beautiful tree mm. mine has bloomed same story that's why i have another one now mm. very cool blue jabotacaba along with yeah this orange i actually bought as a tree i bought the tango oh this one's actually really good too this is the blue. that's a blue jabotacaba is this also known as the false jabotacaba Merciaria, yep, the... Merciaria vexdor, oh, yeah, okay. and that is our, also Merciaria. Okay. Glazoviana. Oh, this is the gl Glazovia. Okay. Oh. And have you gotten fruit from this? Uh, no. That's the one where I've had. <clears throat> Let me see. Let me make sure I have that name right for one. Yeah, it's Glazoviana. That's why I have a second one in a pot there. Oh, okay. I'm waiting to graft that one onto this one. And then they need cross pollination. Oh, they need the cross pollination. There are other people that say my tree gets fruit, and I only have one, but this one's already twelve years old and hasn't. Okay. So I got to push things along. Okay. Yeah. Very different leaves. Longer leaves. Uh, soft. Velvety. Soft. Yeah. Interesting. And when in bloom again, it's spectacular because most of the tree is white. So uh -huh. it's like a Christmas tree. <laughs> cool. You got a mango tree. And mango tree, that's one of mine. That's, I think, just a manila, where I have a named cultivar in the back over there. Okay. Uh, yeah. This is Katsura, something that people should uh, go and look up if they've, they've never seen this fruit. Oh, so just look up the, the genus, and then you'll get a lot of different species. Mm -hmm. But I have a red cultivar and a green cultivar. They do need cross-pollination. Mm -hmm. But it looks like a landmine. When you look at the fruit, it's this <laughs> bumpy, weird, you know, looking stuff. And so mm -hmm. I, this third year flowering, no fruit. So I'm going to trade some cuttings because apparently you can graft these. Mm. So if okay. this doesn't pollinate this, I'm going to graft. Mm. Very cool. That's a dwarf sapodilla. That's not going to, that's Silas Woods. It maxes out at six feet. Nice. So I think that is just cool because that can live in a container. Yeah. This year I've almost put everything in the ground. So yeah, yeah. if you had visited me last year, you would have seen almost all the stuff in a container. Yeah. But with water and all this other stuff, that's why in the ground <laughs> yeah, it goes. Yeah, yeah. Some novelties, because in LA you're definitely not supposed to grow jackfruit. That's a jackfruit. Oh yeah. I planted back in 2016. Jackfruit tree. So it does die some winters. Last yeah. year we thought we were going to lose it, but this winter it wasn't quite as cold. Yeah. So it's living. Nice. Uh, other oddities. This is called appleberry. So I do grow some vines, some things that aren't trees. So this, uh, big in Australia, you'll see some of the berries forming right there. They get to be about the size of a bigger than a marble. Okay. I'll say about two marble sizes, mm -hmm. and they're very crunchy, very like mild taste, much like an apple. Mm. But so they kind of trellis up. So I have a mixture of passiflora, appleberry, raspberries, all these different things that are, again, not supposed to typically be grown together. I'm going to see, I, th I don't think you're going to like these, but I want you to try. Tell me what that is a prime arc blackberry. Okay. Let's see this uh, prime arc blackberry. Oh, it's good. Good. Mm. They're either really tart or they're spot on. When they're spot on, they're good. good. Yeah. That's good. That is a ruby glow passiflora up there, and it has blue tape because I am trying to cross pollinate it with the red one that is in part one of your video. Okay. The vitifolia. And I'm hoping that. I have success because with the one passion fruit I have growing wild in the back, Sorelia, I'm definitely getting fruit. You can see the fruit already forming. Mm -hmm. But some of the vitifolia, well, they all are. So far, the vitifolia is falling off. So mm. I don't think they're compatible with each other. But, you know, you never know until you try. Yeah. Wow. When this, that flower. by the end of summer, it grows so fast, it covers the entire deck. Oh, Okay. Okay. You'll get hundreds of blooms open wow. in a morning, and it um, almost 
makes you knock out because of the smell. They have a really sweet smell. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. So you have, do you cut these back every winter? Every winter they get cut back to where our trellis begins and then they grow back every summer. Oh, okay. With passion fruit, about the lifespan is between six and eight years. Yeah. They should tell this one because this one is going on year 12 and still producing quite wow. a bit. So again, it depends on how you treat a plant. Some yeah. plants are short-lived, but this oh. one is pretty good. Nice. You know, and we have a bunch in the back. I won't, you know, go through everything, but we have more Jabotacaba. We do have a coffee. Oh, uh, coffee. We used to have four coffees, but we sold the other three, and now we just have the one in the ground. Wow. Guys, look, coffee, and it has coffee berries. And I would say it's pretty yeah. happy. Yeah. Amazing. Lots and lots of coffee here. Wow. Yeah, that's amazing. Did we try and roast the coffee one year? I don't. Oh, we did. Yeah, it didn't really work out. We didn't do a good out? job. No. Okay. No. Wow, that's a lot of coffee. Yeah, I wish it was a better view of the bush, but yeah. but it's quite a lot of coffee in there. Whoa. Yeah, you could see a lot. It's kind of hard to see in this sun, but. And then those are at least turning, so it looks a little more impressive where they're turning yeah. red. Yeah. Kelly's got a lot of little plants and pots, including some Suriname cherries here. Yep. I could tell. Right there. But that's that's amazing coffee. Wow, you got a lot of the a lot of people don't know, but the berry itself is edible and it's very sweet. It yep. Should be sweet. Yeah. More and people should mean, actually eat that outside yeah, cherry, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow, look at that. Coffee growing in Southern California. Very doable. Very doable. Yeah. Especially if you get part shade, you want to protect it from the hottest part of the summer because uh -huh. the leaves will burn. Otherwise, completely doable. Okay. We don't even have that on irrigation, but that does get water from the other plants I'm watering. Okay. So it does its own thing. Nice. Well, I'm gonna say, well this part of the yard, um, and we can leave out the greenhouses because they just have like little plants. Although one is filled with Hoyas. Okay. So this kind of begins the stuff that were all of my Eugenias, Campomanesias, and super rare Anonas. Okay. Guava has a cousin called Campomanesia. Okay. A lot of the fruit look like flying saucers. So this is Campomanesia guazimifolia. Mm -hmm. Beautiful bloom. Yeah, that's nice. Look at that. Hold on, let me try to get it. I'm keeping this tree for the looks. Yeah. Don't keep this particular Campomanesia due to taste. No. The fruit looks cool. Everything about it is like, I'm going to freaking love this fruit. It tastes like a very burnt orange. Like if you put an orange in open fire and then got it back out, that's <laughs> what you're dealing with. Hmm. Compared to this other one, this is in the same family, Campomanesia. You can tell a lot different in the growth. But this tastes really good and tropical, but a super tiny fruit. Ah, okay. With that one, you get a lot to eat, but you're not liking what you eat. Yeah. This one, you don't get a lot to eat, but yeah. man, it's good. Yeah. yeah. Nice flower as well. Very cool. Nice. Dwarf longan, because longan. I've had this longan forever. Yeah. And it doesn't get much bigger than this. No. A couple of rare guavas, like this one came from Bellamy Trees. This is just an unknown uh, guava, but man, I dig its leaves. Yeah. Guava from the Amazon. Yep. I think this one is also from the Amazon. Uh, De Simbabia. I just love it because of the leaves, all mm -hmm. the curly leaves. Yeah. Super, super, like, interesting. Whoa. And in the winter, see, like, this purple? The whole plant is that purple. Oh, it's it purple. Yeah. It's affected by the cold, yeah. but visually it's stunning. Nice. Very cool. And then as you turn around, we have everything from dragon fruit, which this has already fallen <laughs> once about four years ago or rebuilt it. Let's hope that this stays put. I put it in, uh, I put my trellises in the metal no dig post holders. So I'm hoping that prevents the rot. Okay. But man, produces a ton of fruit. These three flowers were open in the morning. Oh, yeah, yeah. Look it's at on a variety that doesn't need pollination. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, nice. But some of them do need pollination. So I do kind of keep track and I pollinate the ones that are needed. These are dragon fruit flowers. Oh, they're beautiful. Look at that. There's going to be a ton of them. Yeah. 
And there's more back there. And one right here. Yeah, that's great. And I do have one. Um, so like this one, I put a note for myself. The flower is purple. Where these open and they're about dinner plate size white. Really? This wow. one is magenta. So it's like a bright reddish purple. Awesome. Very cool. Cool. But you do have to hand pollinate that oh. one with another different type of dragon fruit. So how do you do that? You take, put your hand in there? Yeah, I actually, uh, this one didn't need it, but I did them uh, anyway. So inside the flower, you have all the pollen of the male parts here. And you move them to inside the female parts, uh -huh. which are right there. And so I'm going to take uh, pollen from this flower, for example, and then go put it in the female part of the purple flower and that will do the pollination. Okay. Interesting. Wow. Is this the house variety or is this like a named one? This is called sugar dragon. Sugar dragon. Okay. So small red fruit, but very delicious. Oh, nice. Very cool. Whoa. Oh, look and then like a forest over here. I'm not sure even how we go through this. So <laughs> this is a combination of Jabotacaba, Anona, Poteria. But this is the one I was telling you about. So, you know, everyone knows the Jabotacaba that you and I are familiar with, the Colliflora. Mm -hmm. This is Plinia edulis. The one that I'm telling you tastes completely different. It's a big orange fruit. Yeah. I've grown this one. I planted it from seed 2017. So however old that is, uh, seven years. Yeah. So it's this big in seven years, does great in the ground. Uh, I see a lot of new growth, but I'm super excited if we can get this to fruit in SoCal. Okay. Game changer for a Botacaba because really? that means a whole different type of fruit would then be available for okay. people. Nice. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, as we go down here, this is a lot of Eugenia. And what I did with this row is so certain Eugenia stay small. Yeah. And then as you go get with the Suriname cherry, they can get pretty yeah. big, right? Yeah, yeah. So all of these are dwarf and we work our way up in size. This one I'm going to point out this is Coronata because A, it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. The leaves, I think the small little leaves are super cute. Mm -hmm. And the fruit to me tastes like a freaking chocolate raisin. Chocolate raisin. Wow. Okay. Yeah, it has a very unique chocolatey taste to it. So I, uh, it's one of my faves. Nice. Coronata, never heard of it. Wow, that's nice. Yeah, this is a Taguahensis. It's also a short one. Mm -hmm. It's called a dwarf Grumachama. Very similar. Is the fruit mind blowing? Yeah. No, but it's a very cute plant. Nice. Okay. And inter, um, you know, we won't talk about all of them, but these are just okay. lots of different species. Of you like you were saying before, it's like one to two foot in between yeah. this way, one foot this way. Yeah. So I do know that these are eventually going to get so big that yeah. they can't stay. But I'm looking for the best tasting fruit. Mm -hmm. That is what stays. And then the other ones, I'll either gather seeds and start them in Hawaii, or I will do something with them. Or if they're just not deserving of mm -hmm. like space, they just won't get grown. Yeah. But you got to try it right yeah. before you do it. That one looks familiar. Is that Squamiflora? You got it. Yes. Nice eye. I have one at home. Nice eye. Yeah. Has yours bloomed? No. This is first year in the ground. It survived oh. the winter, fine. Yep. No problem. Yep, it's a champ. Yeah. It is definitely a champ. This one is this one is very promising for Southern California. Eugenia squamiflora. Uh, you can see the sign down there. I'll put the Latin name here. V supposed to be very tasty. One of the better ones for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I have another spice for you over here. I was going to take you this way first. Again, apologize for the small paths. No worries. But, you know, a bunch of these are flowering this year. Like, for example, this one is flowering, but I'm not getting fruit off of it. Um, this one was sold to me as Bertoctiana, but the people from Brazil are saying it's not because it's not flowering the same way. Okay. But if it were that one, it's even better than Squamiflora, is oh, what yeah. I'm told. Okay. As is like this one, this one's Blastantha. So instead of going through all the names, yeah. just know that every single bush... Everything here is just a different variety. Probably one of. Yeah. And I did it also because I want to cross pollinate them. Like, yeah. let's pretend this one's awesome and this one's awesome. Mm -hmm. We never know if the baby's going to be super awesome. Yeah. Hence. And but you know, you I did plant not all know. Those out in Hawaii. Yeah. I'm going to let you try this one, but you're going to hate me for it. Really? So, this is the Eugenia piriformis. Ah. You okay. said you hadn't had it. Yeah, I never had this one. So here, well, I may not have you taste it because you're just going to hate me. Like I said, it's going to yeah. leave your mouth so nasty if it's not ripe. Really? 
This is I can I can pick it if you want to. If you just want to get an unripe one, just so you can say you had it. But if they're unripe, they're super sour. Uh -huh. When they are ripe, they're like a watery, nice, sweet mango. Oh, okay. Okay. But this is what if they want a close up of the fruit. Oh yeah. That is not an apricot. Nope. That is the Eugenia pyroformis. Yep. What do they call it? Uvaya? Uvaya? Yeah. Those one of the names. Yeah, it needs to be a little squishy. Okay. I was hoping it would be ripe by the time you got here. Nice looking tree. Very nice. ornamental. Nice looking tree too. It's a shy producer. So at a tree this size, I only get about 10 fruit or so a year. Okay. I but like know. this one's even bigger. I don't know what it is about this one. Where it's, it's like, like stuck in between. Yeah. yeah. Is that one squishy? No, it's about the same. All right. Damn it. I was hoping that you would get to try it. That's okay. What is this? This is the true cherry of the Rio Grande. That's oh. how I know the other ones look so different because I'm also comparing the bark and comparing the leaf oh, structure. Okay. okay, yeah, yeah. And this one I just hacked back because it was getting yeah. too tall. So okay. I said, you know what? Yeah. You'll live your life as a dwarf and it still produces fruit. Yeah. All right, nice. This one is Potomba. This one is a weird, weird, I wish I had fruit for you. It tastes like an apricot. Yeah. It's... A very Charlie Brown tree. It does not grow well, mm -hmm. but produces so much fruit. This Charlie Brown tree, and I'm not going to exaggerate. Kelly, come up with a real number: seventy fruit. Whoa! When it looks like this, because uh -huh. every one of those tips uh -huh. carries about five to ten blooms, and each one of those blooms will give you a fruit, and they're all very tasty. Ah, that's interesting. Huh. So different, different types of fruit. You have Anona all around you. You have Spinescens. You have a Marginata, which actually does fruit here. Uh -huh. um, I guess my point is, I see, again, when I thought of Anona, I thought of Cherimoya. I've had it. Didn't know any other Anona survive in the ground. Mm -hmm. But these are not only surviving, these are flourishing. And what are these called? This is probably Larifolia, Neosalicifolia. There are four different ones. Uh -huh. And then back here, you have Anona Spinescens. Of Nona marginata. Wow. And then sorry for the tight squeeze, but so this was my latest trial. These are ones that I haven't heard of people growing in the ground. This is hypoglauca. Mm -hmm. As you can tell, it is not happy, <laughs> although I may have yeah. saved it. Yeah. This is a super rare one, Herzogii. Okay. And it's doing pretty freaking well. So yeah. it survived winter. It's coming back. I think it's gonna be a keeper because it can it can survive. Okay. And then this one is Sylvatica. There, it's like a Rolinia type fruit. Oh, huh, interesting. And it's also living. So of the three, I do have losses. I don't think this one is going to be something I can grow in the ground here. But even if I get these two, I consider a win. Nice. Okay. More dragon fruit. More dragon fruit. This will be, I think you'll be one of the first people in Southern California to try this. Um, okay. Whenever you grow rare fruit, you never really know what it's going to be like. So I've waited a long time to try this fruit. What? I haven't posted my video on it yet. <laughs> so this is Allophilus edulis. Okay. There's three rare fruit trees that are giant trees. I didn't really know, but I didn't really care. Planted really close to each other. So it's not this beautiful leafy one okay. or this one. It's the one with really small leaves. Yeah, I see so, I grew it out, finally got fruit this year, and I'm not going to say anything again because I don't want to ruin it, but this is why you have to grow things out yourself, because you're either going to love or hate it. So, once again, this is the... Allophilus edulis. I don't know the common name. Okay. Wow, this is... I've never even heard of that, that genus or family or whatever it's called. But and I would gonna, probably just eat one at a time one because a time. Okay. it does have a big seed. I will warn you. Okay. So you're not going to like chomp on it. You're going gotcha. to suck on it. Okay, here we go. Hmm. 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 Pretty mild, right? Yeah. So my point is, you spit out. My point is, I grew. I spent several years growing this out, thinking, oh my God, it's mm -hmm. going to be mind-blowing. Ends up being a big seeded eh, mm. fruit. 
Okay. Is it beautiful? I think it's pretty. Yeah. The birds can eat it, but I'm not going to be like, yeah. you know, touting it because okay. it's just okay. What I hear is because it produces so many fruit, you collect them all and you make an alcohol from them. That's when it turns delicious. Okay. Where is, is it, where is it from? Where is it native to? <sighs> Somewhere in South America. I can't remember the specifics, but people in South America know all about it. Oh, interesting. But I am going to take that taste out of your mouth. And give you something I think is good. Just be careful when you step over here because I have irrigation okay. that's everywhere. Okay. It's a little funky. <laughs> do, do you recognize this tree at all? Because you may have already had it. Um, hold on. And you can't look at the label. Okay. Here's the oh, fruit. Oh, I, 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 I see it. Have you tasted it? I think I have. Okay, so it's going to be no big surprise yeah. to you. It's, is it the... Oh, you tell, yeah, tell us about it. This is in the citrus family. Yeah. It's called the gin berry. Yeah. <laughs> For me and a few other people, it's the bomb yeah. because it truly tastes like a gin and tonic. <laughs> For other people, they don't like it. But yeah. I could eat this fruit as a novelty fruit for days because I find it so interesting. I like these. I think it tastes just like a gin and tonic, <laughs> which is weird. I'm like, how can a fruit taste like an alcohol? But it does. Mm. Yeah, it's good. Very strong taste. Strong palate. It punches you in the head when you eat, when you bite into it, and that's what I like about it. It's really, really strong. Yeah, not a mild fruit at all. Strong taste. I think most people would like it, or no, it's a love hate. Either you love it or you hate it. I actually love these. These are good. These are good because I like these strong flavored fruits, and this is definitely strong and easy to grow. Yeah. And the thing is, if it's in the citrus family, I would maybe say grow by seed. But just because it is citrus and yeah. we don't know you want to carry diseases around. But, you know, don't grab a cutting. Don't do that kind of stuff. But yeah. you could plant a seed of it. And that's the way it should be propagated. Cool. Gotcha. Nice. Little Garcinia. Garcinia do well in the right environment here. Yeah. This is true Garcinia. So this is the Mangostana. Uh, oh, yeah? It was fully leafed in the greenhouse. I ran out of space. It defoliated because of aphids. It was a much healthier tree. But as you can tell, it still is healthy outside with new growth. It's just um, with the aphids and then the big temperature change, it's yeah. just suffering a bit, but it will rebound. Okay. And so there's, this, is the, this is the mangosteen, the one that you see in those markets in the Southeast Asia, the purple fruit. They call it the queen of fruits. This is it right here. Wow, you're growing it here. Great. And as far as I know, it's the real thing. Don't don't come at me if it ends up not because I've had this tree a long time. Yeah. I did kill it once. It was out in the winter and it got all the way to the ground and I put it in the greenhouse and I got three shoots come back up. Okay. But I'm hoping the older it is, the stronger it is, yeah. the more I protect it because it, we didn't have the greenhouse when it died. It was also way in a different spot. This gets a lot of protected uh, heat in the summer and in the winter it gets a little bit of circulation so it doesn't get the frost effect that we get in the yard I'm hoping it'll live outside because these were all unprotected this winter oh, and yeah. they lived oh, and okay. you have Luke's Garcinia oh that's good to know Look yeah that. you have this one which I can't remember the name off the top of my head this is Gerardii which I think is more of an ornamental but it has Luke's Garcinia grafted onto it you have oh, the grafted Luke's Garcinia. Wow, yeah. interesting. You have Russell's Sweet yeah. on one. Uh, here's another grafted Luke's. Yeah. And right. so you have a bunch of different ones that um, I'm just trying out. You know, they don't all look fantastic, but they're not bad. Yeah. They don't die in the winter. Yeah, that's great. Because these, a lot of people for many, many years hesitated growing these because the, the reputation was... That they won't survive winters here in Southern California, but but they do. Yeah. I mean, and this is proof. Look at this. You yep. can grow these. Now, getting fruit is another story. It did, but <laughs> Luke's should produce fruit for me. Yeah. Okay. That one in this area should produce fruit. Yeah. yeah. That uh, that Luke's Garcinia has uh, such a hype around it. Yes. It has such a great reputation. I've never had one. I haven't either. But uh, online, if you go online, people will, will hype it up quite a bit. It's supposed to be an amazing fruit. If you get one, let me know how it tastes. Will do. Yeah. And this is uh, this is a known alonga for. I'm just pointing it out because I haven't known anyone in California to fruit it yet. It does have a flower. It has a gorgeous flower. In Florida, people are going to fruit this. No problem. 
but we're hoping we get a fruit this year because we actually have a big ass flower up there. And this is the say, say, longa flora, oh, a Nona, Nona longa, longa flora. flora. Okay. Produces one of the bigger fruits, and sure. the flower smells kind of like raspberry yeah. cream. Okay. So the flowers have a good smell, and the fruit's apparently tasty. So do you do you uh, take pollen from the other anonas and try to pollinate your other anonas? Try to create. I will this year, especially okay. for that guy. Okay. What I'm we'll we'll end here soon. I'm yeah, going to show you a tragedy. A tragedy. A tragedy. This is, oh. but this guy was a black sapote. Okay. So I can't go and say I'm an expert at everything because this black sapote last year produced 50 fruit. Uh -huh. It was amazing. It was just too big of a tree. Mm -hmm. So my dumb self pruned it hard, probably around October-ish and killed it, except for this is finally coming out. So I'm hoping that I'm going to let this live and these parts here will be the new branches. But I've learned my lesson. There are some trees I just can't do the Kelly thing with. It does not like to be pruned hard, and especially in the fall. So I almost, because, you know, black sapote can be really benign in the way it tastes, or it can be really yeah. kind of dense in flavor. This did have flavor to it, so I did like the tree. I was just like, damn it. Yeah. But it's coming back. Yeah. Okay. And then back there, the big trees are tree tomatoes, tamarillo. There aren't any ready yet to give you, but yeah. they produce a big, 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 you know, tomato looking fruit that tastes like a passion fruit a little bit. Nice. I have a big cherimoya. We won't walk around because it's a mess, but this has about 35 different varieties grafted on it. Really? Wow. Yeah. From adamoyas to uh, other cherimoyas to has a sugar apple. Wow. Uh, oh, cool. Thai lesser sugar apple. Grafted on that's living five varieties on one tree. Wow. Yeah. There's one. There's some more. Now these are this year's. Uh, we do have there's success another. stories from other years where I actually have a fruit on it from one that's called late. That's that's all I know. Watch yourself. I don't want you to this gets messy back here because this wasn't meant for anyone, you know, yeah. besides me. But like this fruit, I'll take it off and I'll just put it back on later. This is from a variety that I couldn't find anything about. But the reason I protected it is the squirrels. But the leaves look different and the fruit looks different. So I think it's an Adamoya Cherimoya hybrid. Dark, dark, dark leaves. And the fruit looks a little funky too. So I use these guys to protect yeah. first line of defense. Yeah. And then I protect line yeah. of sight with these guys. Yeah. But yeah, look at this leaf. The leaf is really dark and interesting and it kind of looks like it has reticulata in it or i don't know it's some crazy stuff going on in there unknown variety you guys of uh anona yeah it was just given to me as late that's all they said late so i'm like i don't know what you mean by late but okay <laughs> yeah so you have 35 varieties on here do you do you still need to hand pollinate or do you the get some seedling itself is a self pollinating cherimoya okay so Good. some that doesn't mean that everything else will self-pollinate so i do i hand pollinate a lot okay okay here's one here's a graft here yeah going out got one up here also going out this big one right here that you see here so this is honey heart so it's pretty significant in size okay. this is tied lesser okay. so it's weird uh because it's off the same branch and you think, oh, all of this is the honey heart. But no, you have two varieties grafted onto the same branch. I just did them right next to each other. Yeah. So they split off. Nice. What's your opinion on the honey heart? Have you gotten fruit? I did. They're a big fruit. Yeah. Not my favorite, but okay. very, for the size, yeah. huge. Okay. All right. Yeah. Wait, which one of these do you like of the ones? That have, have you gotten fruit from the grafted ones? Besides this honey heart? Thai Lessard was yeah. exceptional. I've gotten one fruit of all the years I've grown it because yeah. I guess I do. It's in a shady spot, which is bad. And yeah. it has to be hand pollinated, which is bad. Okay. So it was my favorite. And then the seedling. The yeah. seedling, I have to say, is a really good tasting yeah. cherimoya. Nice. Nice, you know, sugar tart balance, not too much of one or the other. Cool. And then I did a major strip. So sorry, it looks like a mess, but yeah. there were no leaves and that's where all the grafts are. They're hidden everywhere, but yeah. some are, you know, African pride is growing yeah. 
from a few years ago, Honey Heart, uh, Timolata is in there. Yeah. And Thai Lessard is not a Chiramoya, no. it's a... Sugar, sugar, sugar apple. Sugar. Yeah. But it, it's living and it's surviving. This is Thai Lessard, you can see down here. The leaves are very interesting, but yeah. I didn't know sugar apple survive on Cherimoya until I tried it. Yeah. Yeah, here's my original thing. So you, know, this label is at least eight years old. So you know the craft is at least eight years okay. on the street. Cool, man. Wow. Wow. Yeah, so sorry, it's a little tight in this area. These were some of the rare papayas. They look like papaya leaves, but just so people know, like this was pubescens, which is uh, a little weird and interesting. Mm -hmm. But like, check this one out. This is Carica vasconcelia. And it's so weird that that's the only photo I can find on the internet, period. Yeah. Yep. It's a, somebody boiling it in a pot. They say they use it to make some stews and stuff. <laughs> but it's a really cool looking papaya. Yeah. And it uh, won't be anything like the regular ones. Nice. And the, dragon just dragon fruit that I'm getting rid of. But these are all the grafting uh, projects over here. Really cool Anona. I went to a farm at the end of February, beginning of March. Well, middle of March. And so, yeah, this guy gave me a ton of different stuff. And so some live, some don't. Yeah. Kind of a hit or miss situation. But I do have a llama growing. Oh, yeah? Yeah, this is oh. red llama. Or no, that might be, one of these is a red llama. You can tell by the leaves. And I'm like, kick ass. Wow. All right, so why don't we, I'll, I'll open up both greenhouses so you can kind of see what I'm doing in there. And then sure. we'll call it a day because I know okay. I'm taking up a lot of your time. No, no, no worries. Hopefully it's been fun though. It's been amazing. Yeah. It's great stuff. So this greenhouse. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> is I moved some of my Hoyas in here because I was running out of room, but it's also for example, Garcinia that I didn't trust fully outside yet. Okay. So this is a Garcinia. Uh -huh. uh, some rare, um, trying to think of something special to show you. This is a Eugenia that has a really cool leaf. It's, uh, I'll let you get the name. This is Eugenia Le Leitonai. It's okay. hard for me to say that word. Okay. But huge, very beautiful, beautiful Eugenia. It will go outside. It's going to go under the ground? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, you know, different various other plants growing here. Grafts. Yep. Those are some of my successful ones. And this, one of these is the red, oh yeah, so this is red alama on Cherimoya. Oh, okay. Something people may want to know, the reason I'm having success with these, mm -hmm. the ones in the greenhouse, I use super glue. So I'm not a good grafter. I know you're the graft man. You're <laughs> amazing at what you do, right? I have to cheat. Okay. So when I made the cut and I put the scion in, I use super glue just on the edges, not where it would get on the cambium at all. Okay. So that I would hold it together and there was a better, you know, uh, union between yeah. the two. And then I would wrap it with tape. When I did that, my very bad grafting skills went from very low to very high. And I got a lot of success with the ones I tried that on. Okay. So that's interesting. The super glue goes... Right on the edge, like where the barks meet each other, but never enough to get into the cambium layer. Okay. So I'm trying to make sure the cambium still touch. Okay. So just imagine I'm doing it just as a superficial thing so that when I start putting the grafting tape on, uh -huh. the super glue is drying and it's getting even a tighter thing so I don't have to use rubber bands. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. You know, or any kind of binder thing on it. Gotcha. It's not gonna work for everything. Yeah. But it is really, like the Eugenia up front, the one that tastes like garlic, okay, that's yeah. gonna be almost 100% and yeah. I used it on that. Use the, uh, the super glue thing? Yeah. Oh, interesting. Gosh, so a bunch of different things, bunch of seedlings I'm trying, and a lot of, you know, not success stories, but... Wow, well, I've never heard of this one. Eugenia Macro Bracteolat. Wow, interesting. Never heard of that. I do have a bigger one of those in the ground. Wow. But like, this one almost died. This was in the ground. So I had to okay. dig it back up and put it in a pot, and it is coming back. So okay. because it has one of these... I know it's been in the ground, yeah. and I know it doesn't like it. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> so it's going to live its life in the greenhouse. Yeah. Wow, that's amazing. Azeda. Dang, what is this stuff? Observa. 
these are some of the ones when we were outside in that Eugenia row area. These are my extras. Okay. A lot of them are in the ground, and these were the ones that I was like, in case I lose that one, I needed a backup. Wow. There's some amazing stuff here. This is called Thank Sweet you. Blackberry. Never heard of that. <laughs> That's really cool. There's the, the, the Eugenia rabbit hole. It's so deep. So deep. And it keeps getting deeper because they're from Brazil. People go down there, and they bring these varieties back that they find in the rainforest or they find in the, the, the brushlands. And they find these new varieties and they send them back. And so there's constantly new, new Eugenias getting uh, introduced to the world. You know, it's pretty fun. Same with the Anonas. It's like, like, uh, this is Anona Salzmanii, by the way. Oh, yeah? Uh, yeah, you have to grow this one in the greenhouse. Uh, but it's called like the queen or king of Anonas. Yeah. So I am hoping to fruit that. It's pretty old. Grows yeah. slow. It's supposed to be a big tree, but if, I'm going to keep cutting it. But Anona that's a salt mania. Yeah, this one is like has a great uh, reputation in the in the rare fruit world. Definitely does. People are really hyped about this one. <laughs> this is cacao, by the way. Yeah. We forgot to water it, so it died, uh -huh. and now we put the water back on. And it's coming back. Wow, cacao! We got it to fruit. Oh yeah. Matt hand pollinated the flowers, and we got a cacao pod on it. Wow. But then you know our negligence just. Re I, Oh. When we went, when we walked in and we saw it dead, we were both like, "Son of a oh, bitch!" That sucks. Yeah. We worked so hard to get a trunk this big, yeah, grown from seed from a fruit we got, and man, it just happens. Yeah, but it'll live. Cool. You actually got a pod. How yeah. was the, how was the, the the little fruits? Well, before maturity, it fell off. So I don't know if it's something we did or something that greenhouse did, but okay. it got to be about yay big, okay. and then fell off. Yeah. Awesome. And then this will be the last greenhouse, and then yeah. we'll call it a day. This, that one I built myself from just parts that I went and I you bought. You built that yourself? The whole greenhouse? Yeah, I built that whole greenhouse by hand. Wow. That's what Kelly built this greenhouse himself. That's nice. I do not know construction. I googled. <laughs> I figured out what to what? order. Yeah. Awesome. Very nice. And then this one was a kit. But this one is just more Whoa. of the same shit show. But you do get vanilla. Whoa. We get vanilla pods. Whoa. And just other orchids and wow. super rare anona I'm trying to start and things I'm trying to get wow. headings to strike of. There's a lot going on here. Yeah. Dang. I know it's good. overwhelming. Yeah. Nona Murakata. This looks like coffee. No, this is another Anona. This Nona. is probably a particulata. And then this is a sour shop that oh, was yeah. sold to me by a friend. 25 pounds. Oh, yeah. I was like, all right, yeah, I'll take seeds. Yeah, nice. Wow, a lot of different stuff here. Yeah, this is my Hoya obsession is kind of, they take up too much space and yeah. I only get flowers. I'd rather get food. Yeah. So the Anona, I mean, the Anona and stuff are taking over. The Hoyas are coming out. Okay. Things like this, though, like tropical blueberry. Mm -hmm. It is an epiphyte. Okay. Doesn't need to be in the ground. Produces blueberries on a little thing that hangs in a basket. How cool is that? Uh, that's cool. Yeah. So Anonas, was there... What got you into Anonas? Was there one particular Anona that you ate that was... Uh, that's that got you down into the starting collecting these? That's a great question. Cherimoya got me Cherimoya. interested. Okay. Rolinia got me hooked. Uh -huh. Reticulata was the one that I am so, that and Alama, I have to grow them and fruit them myself. Okay. I have to. Okay. But for the ones that you can get, Cherimoya is always the one we can get here in SoCal. But Rolinia, when I got one that was not snotty, when it was a really good chewy one. Yeah. Lemon meringue pie, man. Really? <laughs> and then the, the other ones, like I had San Pablo and um, what's the other one? Not, uh, I can't think of the name right now, but yeah, just, just really good. They taste like yeah. raspberry yogurt. Wow. Very cool. Yeah. And so, you know, I haven't got to taste a lot of what I grow, but finally a lot of the plants are coming yeah. into, you know, fruition. So yeah. As every year goes by, I get the, you know, this one works, this one doesn't. So everything's kind of changing, but I don't know if you saw the two signs there. It's one of those, like, 
I have the 90% rule. 90% grown from seed. Okay. Uh, 90% permanent, but 10% always changing, and things mm. like that. Okay. Cool. Yeah. That's amazing. Kelly, thank you very much for showing us your, your collection. This is amazing, amazing stuff out here. I, mean, I, could, I could keep going. It's like there's, we can have a chat just about all those Eugenias over there. You have to come back sometime. You are invited. <laughs> Thank you. It could be a long video just talking about all the his Eugenia collection. So there's a lot of diversity here. Uh, this is really fantastic stuff. Kelly, thank you for having us. Thank you for and coming guys, over. I appreciate subscribe, it. Subscribe, like, subscribe, follow Kelly on social media. I'll put his uh, li I'll put the links to his social media down below. Give him a follow too. And as usual, thank you for watching. Stay connected. Bye bye.